Yo, what's up everybody, how's it going? Today we're playing Dota 2! But with hybrid heroes. Two abilities from two heroes to make one hero. Quick maths. No, no math. Math is illegal. But setting that aside, this mode is fairly straightforward. It just takes two heroes and turns them into one hero. So for example, we are Skyrim Mage Pugna. Which, um, <laughs> yes. So I got Arcane Bolt here, and I, I took I took Pugna because uh, Pugna has 5.2 intelligence gain. Oh my god, this guy is going to school and crushing it. Like, holy fucking shit, dude. 5.2 intelligence gain is insane. And, fun fact, of course, this scales with intelligence. So we can Arcane Bolt people, you know, go crazy. But yeah, it seems kind of like a fun little idea here. We've got the Crapify on top of that, you know, like, oh my god. Bit of a slow and then the ultimate. Also nice, you know, we get multiple Aghanims effects, which is always kind of fun. So, seems good all around, right? But yeah, I think that about, that about sums it up, doesn't it? Let's have a quick look at the other heroes. So we've got an Invoker Rubik, Gyrocopter Sniper with Take Aim, which is an Assassinate. That's kind of fun. Who is Pudge? Tiny Pudge. Oh, Ooh, that's actually kind of scary. Okay. Like, that's actually, that's, that actually has me a little concerned, I'm not gonna lie, this tiny budge does make me a tiny bit worried. But, uh... Yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Oh, no. Hello there, Pudge. Take this, my bad boy. I'm gonna go out and grab ourselves... What's it called? A little bit of, a little bit of vision? And, uh, yeah, I guess that about sums it up. So we're just gonna go ahead and play a little bit. We'll see what we can do. I've got ourselves uh, Decrepify now. And this should do a good amount of damage. Yeah, it already hits really hard. But, like, it's gonna scale. Oh, this is this is gonna scale pretty hard, which I am fairly happy about. I want to give you guys a quick reminder that we're doing the Kickstarter for Sweet Dreams Alex. Soon. In case you don't know what that is, it's my new little game that we're making. It's just like a little puzzle game, but it's like it's like a, a, a build, it's like a construction game, a construction tower defense puzzle game, <laughs> something like that. In that general area, we're gonna be looking to just you know raise a bit of money on Kickstarter. It's not gonna be that much, but yeah. mace maker, labyrinth builder. But that's not really a genre. I'm trying to, like, quantify it. It's a bit of a weird one. That's pretty much what I'm planning to do going forward. We're just gonna make weird little things. I don't know. I, I, I like that. I like the weird games. That's always been my... Always been my jam. Hey, buddy. I don't mind. We can take this fight. Like, whatever. Let's make this happen. Let me get a bottle. I have no beef. I think this is actually just normal Dota speed. I was planning to play multiple matches, but there was no, like, setting, so I couldn't amp up the golden experience gain. Uh, so I guess we're just playing normal Dota speed then. Well, if we're gonna be doing that, I really am actually quite happy with my hero. So, I suppose that's good at least. Is Polybridge a puzzle game? I guess? Polybridge is also in the kind of, like, construction slash puzzle genre. If I, so like, the games that to me are the most similar to Sweet Dreams Alex and kind of like their style are Polybridge and World of Goo. I don't know if you guys ever played much World of Goo, but that's a fucking banger. I, I love World of Goo. I remember one time, I'm gonna like... Like, I was, uh, when I was still in school, I was younger. Where I was staying at a, a friend's place. I was, like, kind of, like, I don't know, like, I, I wouldn't call it a party, but, you know, people were there for the whole night and we we're planning to get drunk. And when I say we we're planning, I mean, after, after a little while, I, I had brought my V along because, you know, why not play some video games? And we hooked it up, and then people were like, what's that? And we're like, that's World of Goo. And they're like, what is that? Okay, they're like, show us. So I showed them. And then that's all they did the entire night. 
<laughs> we just we just played all of World of Ghoul. <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> and uh and that was it. And I have kind of fond memories of that because that was really fun. Hey buddy, what are you doing? Ah, that's probably not gonna connect, right? But that will. Goodbye. Very good. Buy me party pooper. No! Like, I, I mean, I didn't make them play World of Goo. <laughs> I wanted to play Mario Kart. <laughs> but it's just it was just kind of fun, you know? Like and so I've I've always had this kind of fondness for World of Goo. It's just kind of a banger as well. What do we get? We'll get one of these. And then I, I think we're just gonna grab ourselves a Yules. We're gonna need mana. We also do want Agonims. I think that just sounds all around pretty solid. Oh, there's a Pudge 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 up there. When we get hooked, we need to make sure we don't immediately use our ultimate because it's gonna be interrupted by the tiny stun. But that's not a huge deal per se. Like it's it's it should be okay. Like the tiny stun doesn't really do that much. We just as long as we can throw out an ultimate, we in all likelihood can even tank the tower. Like we can actually let ourselves get hooked, it would be fine. As long as we are just ready to Oh, wow. Nice reaction from our opponent there. Bit unfortunate. Yeah, uh, my attack was used on the creeps. I wasn't really planning on it going that way, but oh well. Best game for couch partying on PC. Honestly, I don't even know. Something we did pre-pandemic that was a lot of fun is we had a bunch of people over and we actually just played uh, the Jackbox games. We just played some push the button and and what's it called? Uh, Murder Hotel. But the Jackbox games were a lot of fun. There's... Uh, oh, I don't know what it's called in English. It will probably just be called Wear Words. Like a werewolf, but with words. There's like a it's like a little game that's also quite fun, but that is actually uh, like also partially a physical product. Something that's like really interesting in board games is that there's like this overlap now happening of like physical and digital products. Because you can actually assume people will be able to just download an app because everybody has a phone, right? Which is kind of neat. <clears throat> cool invisibility. I'm annoyed that I died right there. I really didn't need to. You know, I even talked about that kind of like exact situation like just a moment beforehand. I just need to make sure I... You know. There we go. Ooh. There we go. Now we got it. Very good. Oh, there's a, there's a buddy. What are you doing here, my friend? Is that a badge rider? Oh, wait. Why, why are we not going for that? Badge rider and uh, Bane. Dude, I was, forgot the name of that hero for a second. Thought it was going to be Enigma, but like, needed to wrap my mind around that first. I've been a bit tired these past few days. It's mostly because the construction workers showed up again, which is good, but they start construction at 7 a.m. and they wake me up earlier than I want to. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why I've been a little bit all over the place the past few days. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep things together, but I'm very sensitive to not having enough sleep. Well, it has a pretty big impact on me. So... Yeah. 7 a.m. wood face. Yeah, dude, like, what the fuck? Who does things that early? 
crazy. Oh shit. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of keep throwing these bad boys here. Hmm. Okay. I don't know if I'm fast enough. Oh, you stuck around. That helps. Cool. Got it. Alright. So he has our very important Yules. Which is gonna be helping a bit. What are they constructing? Um, they're just fixing up the like house exterior. Because honestly, the, the exterior of the house we live in kind of looked like shit. <laughs> it did it did kind of look it did kind of look like it was gonna fall down any second. Um Admittedly, I believe it. I believe that this house would fall, can't fall down any second. <laughs> if you told me that this thing was about to collapse, I wouldn't doubt it for a second. Uh, so, yeah. Ooh, we gotta be kind of careful, but we do a lot of damage, so I'm kind of looking to just use that. Uh, however, we are also running out of mana because we use a lot of mana. Well, this is all a bit unfortunate. We have definitely chased them off, though. Ideally, I would like to use an ultimate to restore some of my mana now. I think we are actually gonna get an opportunity. Ah, crap. Nice. But I am out of mana. Oh, nice! Hey! Burning all them kills. Easy peasy. <laughs> Let me get an Agonims. Upgrades both our Arcane Bolt and then also, of course, our Life Drain. We could also, I guess, go for the Bloodstone, which is not a bad idea. Then we can just pick up a Kaya right now. And then build into, like, the full-on Bloodstone later. I just really like Agonims of Arcane Bolt. You know, the double shot is just so good. So handy. And then we later on get a get an uh, Octarine core so we can get an Ephalance right now. Hmm. Well, that's a bit juicy. Alright, I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Can you suck a range creep for mana? No. So this only gives you mana. The ultimate only gives you mana if the opponent is a hero and if you are at full health. So it's a bit tricky to use it for mana restoration. But, yeah, it might have worked right there if we had a bit more cast range. That's why the Ether Lens is also nice. Ether Lens on Pugna is actually just like a really good item. Dude, normal Dota feels like very slow, doesn't it? Is this normal Dota? <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, you keep, you keep coming here, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, get in here, buddy. Don't worry, it's fine. Just keep, you know, keep get, coming over here. <laughs> keep coming over here. When will you be casting the tournament? Oh, so I said I was gonna, like, be commentating some um, Dota tournament thing. That's in July, guys. That's that's still a little bit off. Don't worry about that. I'll let you know once we get to it. I do need to, like, actually watch some Dota stuff, though. Like, catch up on the meta game and all of that, because... Honestly, I don't know what the fuck is going on there. Grab ourselves more ultimate. Yeah, I mean, it's normal Dota. You gotta just farm a little bit. We're gonna go to... We're gonna go practice driving today. Because Mickey is almost done with her driver's license. And... Uh, so now it's just a matter of... Kind of, you know, like... Feeling prepared enough to actually take the exam. And so... We're gonna go practice driving today. Just gonna be... 
Well, it's actually kind of interesting. I haven't seen her drive in a in a while. Because <laughs> she's been taking driving lessons for a while now, and I haven't I haven't seen that in a bit. Oh, hello. Ah, you are faceless void weaver. Very fun. Okay, cool. Well, we we survived that. It was a punch, and I don't like it. What do I do about this punch situation? How much does getting a license cost in Germany? Like in total? Depends a bit on how good you are. Because taking the exam is like 400 bucks. And I think the, the written exam is also another like 100 or 200 or something like that. And then you have a bunch of mandatory driving lessons. And that probably adds up to like 1500. But you know, if you fail the exam, then you gotta take more driving lessons because clearly the proof, like the ones you already took, weren't good enough. And so on. So if you get it on the first try, it's probably gonna be like 1500 to 2000 euros, which is expensive. And like, yeah, no, it's, it's just fucking expensive. I don't even know what else to tell you. That shit just costs money. If you don't get it on the first try, then it gets significantly more expensive as you go along, you know? Although I don't really know exactly what the process is because I didn't, I didn't fail, you know? I, I, I got it. Driving is just not that hard, honestly speaking. I need to save up then. Yeah, well, like, it's usually one of the big things that, like, parents, like, save up for for their children here. Uh, traditionally speaking, right? Like, I've never, never in my life heard of somebody's parents buying them a car, but pretty much everybody I knew had their parents to pay for their driver's license. But yeah, it's just expensive. And honestly, it is kind of annoying that it is that expensive because I, uh, you, well, you don't really have much of a choice. I guess it kind of depends, right? For example, where we live right now, you don't really need a driver's license. But where I grew up, you really needed one. Because the only public transport there was just like a bus that, you know, came every two hours. Good fucking luck getting to anywhere with that. <laughs> oh, crap. Ugh. All right. Well, my team is here. All right, we have Invis. Well, we're back to full. Just gotta greed a bit. A bit. Gotta be a little greedy. A greedy little goblin. No. Oh. Ah, oh, that hurts. The silence. Ah, oh, the silence. Alright. We get plus one arcane board per cast, right? Could you cheat the system somehow? Like, go get a license from another EU country? Honestly, I don't know. Probably, actually, maybe. But, you know, like, traveling to another country. Hmm. Well, but the thing is that you can't just... So the way it works in Germany, I don't know how it works in different countries, right? I just, I just honestly don't know. But the way it works in Germany is you need to go to a driving school. And the driving school, they have mandatory lessons that you have to do with them, right? So you need to spend five hours driving... Um, in kind of like on country roads, four hours on the autobahn, and then three hours during like at night. And on top of that, you know, they'll teach you how to actually like use the freaking car and so on. But that is mandatory, and you need to have done that with a driving school. Strictly speaking, you don't actually have to do anything else with the driving school other than um, like um, theoretical stuff. So there is like a theoretical exam and a practical exam. And you do also have to get a certain amount of lessons from, from the driving school if it comes to the theoretical things. I think that's 12 hours combined. So. Yeah, 
Hey, buddy. Nice. And that just, like, takes a while. And, like, I don't know how it works in another country, but, like, you know, you wouldn't be able to come to Germany and take your driver's license here really quick. Because you would have to, like, do a whole bunch of shit to even <laughs> be eligible to, to take the exam. You know, you can't just show up and do it. So I don't really know if you would be able to cheat it. If you go really far away, I know that in New Zealand they have a drastically different system. And like you might be able to like skip a bunch of stuff that way. But I mean it's not gonna be cheaper to go to New Zealand to take your driving exam. <laughs> you know? That's not gonna be cheaper. Oh man. Come to New Zealand. Oh, well, probably eventually again. I mean, like at some point, I'm gonna have to visit Mickey's Mickey's mom and sister again. Uh, at, at some point in the future, but we don't need to do that right now. Oh, dragon scale. That sounds kind of fun. I actually like having some armor. Man, since this is just like a normal Dota speed game, I guess I gotta do this thing again. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video so far. If, if, if you did, you know, don't forget to leave a rating on the video and all of that stuff. It's what I used to do, like, in the middle of the game, because, you know, normal Dota takes a long ass time. I always thought it was stupid. Why the fuck do I have to wait until the end of the game to do that? <clears throat> I mean, you can't even get into New Zealand. They have zero tolerance in tourism right now. Well, I'm pretty sure Mickey and I would be able to get into New Zealand. Because Mickey has family, which means she's able to. And I'm married to her, which means I am family, which means I should be able to. You married before meeting the family of Scanners, boy? No, I was in New Zealand before. I spent quite a lot of time in New Zealand. It's just, I haven't been there in quite a while. <clears throat> Alright, let me get this. There's nothing here, nothing there. Probably just take down these creeps really quick. So since we just like... Like, one of the things is we're missing Pugna's kind of... Pushing power, which is a bit annoying because Pugna is a great pusher and we don't really get to use that. Well, I guess like we just have to think of this hero more like a... Weird Skyrim mage, right? More so than a weird partner. Where would you live if you were living in Germany? I mean, like, by default in New Zealand. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be, like, the default. But if that's cheating, if that's not a proper answer, um, honestly speaking, probably, like, Switzerland or something like that. Not, not that far away, something... Because I actually quite like it here. I wouldn't want to go anywhere, you know? In the US, obviously, with Wispy. Alright, I'll, I'll just move in with Wispy then. Alright. Oh, shit. Alright. Chad, you guys want to come, come move in with Wispy as well? Well, no, actually. I would, I would never want to... Would never want to live in the US. That's like one place I know I would never want to live. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Missile? Is that gonna be enough? It does connect. Oh my god. Let's go, Gyro. Ghost nuts. Australia. I wonder if I would be able. I know if you're in New Zealand. But I'm not a New Zealand citizen. So, but like. I think I should be able to actually just move to Australia. In theory, right? Because I know that people from New Zealand are allowed to just move to Australia. Right? They can just they can just move to Australia. So Mickey, in theory, should be able to just live in Australia if she wanted to. And I can then ask her husband, 
you know, like also move there because I am allowed to live with her. Right? So I think I should be allowed to. Actually, if I wanted to, I could just move there. I've got like a pretty significant amount of countries where I could just move and live there. <laughs> it's, like, it's like kind of weird. Without like any sort of problem. All right. If we take two 14-day quarantine trips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're talking non-COVID right now, I think. Because with COVID, I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. We're just... We're sticking around to where we are. Don't worry, I got you, buddy. Nice. Look at me saving the Wind Ranger. Do you want some healing? Do you want some healing? Because I got a region. I'm happy to just like heal you guys up really quick. <clears throat> it's called privilege. It is privilege. Absolutely. Although it's more or less an unintentional privilege. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be, like, crazy difficult for me to, like, even move to, like, South America in some capacity. Because, strictly speaking, I have family there, too. <laughs> like, not even just strictly speaking, just straight up. I just, you know, would need to find them, which should be possible. Oh, ah, leave me alone. <clears throat> okay. So, what are we getting next? Octarine? I kind of like the idea of an Octarine, honestly. But some spell I steal wouldn't be too bad either. Right? Damn, this gyro is actually kind of nuts. Love this gyro. Oh, it's Beaver. Let's go bottom. Farm up them creeps. Farm up them creeps. Yeah, Arcane Bolt hits pretty hard now. 368 damage right now. That's significant. 368 is not a small amount. On an ability that's got such a low cooldown and is so easy to throw out. Where do you live, Balmy Earth? <laughs> yeah, I am a, I'm a, I'm a citizen of the Earth, really. I don't really like to consider myself citizen of any country. I'm just traveler of the entire planet. All right. Well, ah, God, I had it. Ah, I'm dead, right? The bane coming in from the side. The Bane coming in! Yeah, okay. We got a little run over right there. Stole to int. Oh shit, that actually- That's actually kind of annoying. We need that intelligence, right? We're like big brain people here. That's what we're about. Uh, that is definitely a bit irritating, but oh well. Oh well, oh well, oh well. So be it. What's the Sansa even up to? Oh, this doesn't seem that useful. You get Essence, Aura, and Astral Person. I really thought this was gonna be the... Like, if I was gonna build these heroes, I would've made this the ODQ, right? Or would, it, would that have been too strong? I feel like the OD aura isn't so useful in that current setup. My 
My glasses broke today, so I have to use my pre prescription sunglasses inside to be able to see any further than like 30 centimeters in front of me and now everything is dark. <laughs> oh, that's kind of funny. Although it's not so funny that your glasses broke. That sucks, dude. Did I tell you that we are pretty convinced that our cat needs glasses? I keep joking about how Coco needs cat glasses. Because, uh, oh, and she has asthma. <laughs> Our cat needs glasses and asthma. In cat school, she would be bullied. <laughs> oh, hello, buddy. Ah, shit, there's the Bane again. The Bane is my biggest problem. <clears throat> oh. That's actually fine, thanks. Okay. Ah! Okay, good, 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 good. Nah. Dude, I don't I don't like getting fiend script. I don't like it. Yeah. No, the cat has cat asthma. Which is a thing. You can look it up. You can, if you're curious what that looks like, go on YouTube, look up a video, that's exactly what it looks like. And uh, then she's also very bad at jumping on things when they are very close to her, and she has no problem when they're very far away. And that's why we think she's, she's um, farsighted, right, farsighted. Because of the cast, cast like, no, no, she, she's had cat asthma for like her entire life. But, she's, but yeah, she's farsighted. So that's what we keep saying. She needs glasses and has asthma. In cat school, she would be bullied. <laughs> what do I do here? I don't like getting hit by this fiend script. I guess I could get a Lincoln's. I mean, to be honest, that's probably more useful than this bloodstone I was going for, right? Could get A on this just for good measure. Alright. This guy is dead. I don't need to do anything to him. Um. Nice. Oh, I don't like that Bane. I don't want to fight the Bane. The Bane is scary. Uh, I need to stop doing that while my team is around. Just wanted to slow him down. Oh, god damn it. Yeah, but now there's nobody here. Now you're just being annoying. Like, who cares, dude? Alright, good luck. Ooh, crap. Alright. Uh, Pugna is uh, an old bastard, isn't he? <laughs> it's worth getting a shard here. Oh, the shard! That's a thing! Yeah, you're right. I forgot about that. That would actually be kind of fun, wouldn't it? No, I completely forgot about the shard. That's just... Why cats and not doggos? I don't know, I just have always had cats. It's not that I dislike dogs. I mean, so, like, if, if you if you forced me to give a reason why I prefer cats over dogs, it's that I, I like that cats are really independent. Right? I like that with cats. I don't have to always deal with them. I don't always have to worry about them. They just, they exist and I exist and we interact a few times a day, but we also leave each other alone. And I don't need something that's always in my face. Right, I like having the cat there, I think it's nice, but I also, you know, I don't need the cat around literally 24-7. And dogs are a little bit more active from my experience. But honestly speaking, it's just, like, when I grew up we had cats, it was mostly because my mom didn't have enough time to take care of a dog. Because my mom was really busy because she's still finishing up school and everything. And, uh, my school, I mean uni. 
and and yeah, you know that's that's why we had cats, and then just kind of kept them around, you know, and then you have a cat for fifteen years, and then you don't really feel like getting a dog because you're like, I like the cats. Cats are good, you know, <laughs> like it's fine. I can, uh, so I don't really I honestly think there's like this this weird thing the internet likes to do which is present this as an argument one versus the other cats versus dog and I just think that's like a bit of a weird argument because they're really not that drastically different and they really kind of like serve the same purpose and you know I have no problem with with dogs Ooh, that's not so great Oh my god. God damn it. Yeah, this is where the fact that it's 4 versus 5 is really, really showing. It's really a big problem, sadly. Weaver is scary though. A nasty ass Weaver. I feel like this Weaver was definitely an upgrade in power. Hey Mecha Script, thanks for the 18 months, dude. Appreciate it. Cats are little devils. No. Like the thing about cats that I always like to say is that most people just most people don't know how to deal with cats. You know, because like remember what I just said, where with cats it's they just kind of like leave you alone um, and, and, and you kind of like interact with them like a few times a day. Well, it's important with cats to kind of respect their space. And again, this is just my experience with the two animals, so maybe this doesn't line up entirely with yours. But I feel like with dogs, most of the time you can go up to them and just like interact with them on your schedule and they'll be fine. They'll be happy. With cats, that doesn't work. With cats, you need to respect their schedule. And as long as you respect their schedule, they'll be very nice. And they'll be super chill. But you do kind of have to do that. You do have to give them that, you know, that space. You know, imagine somebody, like, constantly came to you and, like, was touching you and picking you up. And you're like, I don't want this right now. You know, I don't mind that sometimes. Sometimes it's cool. It's just like, right now, can you leave me alone? God damn it. I wish I could help a bit, but the silence is irritating. Whoo! Dude, this troll is actually going hard. Like, what the fuck? And that kind of feeling... You know, you gotta kind of respect that with, with cats. Like, that's just like a thing with them. Gotta respect their space. This guy just really likes ultimating me. Oh, God. Oh! <laughs> Thanks for getting me out of there, buddy. Got it. It's not enough, right? But, you know, we did some damage, I guess. Hey, Wispy, thanks for gifting you and yes to us up. Appreciate that. Oh, no, there's like a whole situation down here. But yeah, Pudge really coming in right there, saving. Saving my poor Pugna. Yeah. They've got some scary single target. I guess, like, Chronosphere is scary, but, like, Chronosphere is one of those things where I always feel like... What's the point in preparing for it? Because you can't really interact with it anyway, right? What do you do against Chronosphere? It's just like, whatever. You're gonna get hit by the bad boy, and that's, that's pretty much what's gonna happen. And the best you can hope for, really, is... Not getting killed. <clears throat> you 
Your cue pierces the speaker. You know, oh, that's true. But I was kind of waiting for my life drain because I need to maintain vision. But I definitely should have used the cue a few times. My sister's cat is like annoying me. Hey, pet me, pet me, take me to your lap and pet me, slave. And then I pet her for a few seconds. She's like all purring, happy and shit. More than a second later, she becomes a psycho, starts biting, scratching and screeching like it wasn't the one that came to my lap. Cats are just crazy. No, you're probably just bad at reading the cat's body language. And I don't mean this in the way that like, ah, oh, haha, look at you, idiot. I just mean, mean it in the way that like what you're describing can very much happen. A cat might be like, hey, pet me, pet me, pet me. And then they get pet, and then they're like, actually, no, I don't want to anymore. And usually they give hints. And by usually, I mean pretty much every single time, right? They show you that they don't want to be pet anymore. The problem is that cat body language can be very, very, very subtle. And it's different from human body language. So they don't communicate this clearly and that's where a lot of these moments come from where people are like oh i was petting the cat and all of a sudden the cat bit me in all likelihood it wasn't all of a sudden the cat was probably already telling you that she doesn't want to be pet anymore but instead you continued when you but you couldn't tell because you just can't read the body language that well this is something that is difficult this is just not this is not your fault really it's just something that is difficult to learn like what is you know like when is the point when the cat doesn't want to be pet anymore? And you just need to be able to like tell the tiny nuances. So for example, with uh, one of my cats, with Noah, what he will do when he's happy to be pet is he'll just like sit there and all of that. But once he's done, what he will often do is he will move up his like hind leg, one of them, and ever so slightly, very, very, very tinily push your hand away. And it's very subtle. But that is how he shows no more. And then if you stop, then he will... Oh, oh crap, what just happened there? Oh, well, I'm dead. Well, there wasn't really much I could do against this guy anyway with the BKB and everything. But he will then, you know, just continue chilling there or eventually get up and leave and would never bite, would never do anything. But if you keep going, eventually he'll get mad. And that's true for every single cat I've encountered in my entire life. They always have these very small, subtle clues that are, frankly, a little hard to decipher if you're not very experienced with the animal. And that's where, in my opinion, a lot of this kind of misunderstanding comes from, where people say, Oh, the cat just suddenly bit me. Well, actually, probably didn't suddenly bite you. You probably just weren't able to tell that it didn't want to be pet anymore. My cat wags, wags her tail to say she doesn't want pets anymore. Right? That's weird. That's like unusual. That's like an old problem. Every cat has their own body language. But if you know, then you can tell. And then you actually never have this situation. But if you don't know, then it can be really difficult and really annoying because you're just like, God oh, fucking damn it. But that's like the thing, right? Like, they're just very eccentric animals. And if that's something that bugs you right if you don't like having an animal where you have to learn how it communicates with you then cats probably aren't the right choice for you frankly speaking right um probably better off with a dog dogs are more straightforward dogs are simple cats are a bit more complicated for me i like that i think that's nice you know i think there's this like thing that i heard is that cats are lesson and consent which is basically saying that with cats it's important to realize that they have opinions too and their opinions may not overlap with yours. And when it doesn't, you need to be able to tell and act accordingly. While with a dog, more often than not, when the dog, the dog will have your opinion. The dog is good with whatever the fuck you want to do with the dog. I mean, as long as you're not being abusive to it, right? But anyway. So that's just, but sorry. Bit of a cat conversation at the end there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a bit more of a classic one, actually. Sorry that we lost, but, uh, well, 4 versus 5 is difficult. It was still a bit of fun, though, I think. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.